Hi everyone. This is the first video on Craig 2D applications. It's assumed that when you're watching this video, you already know how to use the sine, cosine and area rules, as well as the ratios for right angle triangles. Let's get going. Now, before we go to an example, let's quickly look at the ratios and rules that we know already from trigonometry for triangles. Let's start with right angle triangles. Now, a triangle is right angled if it has a right angle or a 90 degree angle. Never assume that a triangle is right angled unless you're told that an angle is 90 degrees. So, when you have a 90 degree angle in a triangle, your longest side will be opposite that 90 degree. And that longest side is called the hypotenuse. I'm sure just hearing the name hypotenuse reminds you about the theorem of Pythagoras. Now, in the theorem of Pythagoras, it states that the sum of the two sides squared equals to the hypotenuse squared. So if I look at the formula I've written there, a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. This brings me to reminding you how to label a triangle. The standard way to label a triangle is to label the side opposite the angle, the letter of the angle, but lowercase. So let me give you an example. The top angle would be uppercase A because it's opposite side A. The right angle will be angle C. And for my diagram here, the other angle will be angle B because it's opposite side B, lowercase b. The next rule I know about right angle triangles is that I know the ratios. Sine is opposite of a hypotenuse, cos is adjacent of a hypotenuse, and tan is opposite of adjacent. Now, these ratios will always stay the same. However, the ratio, ratio is based on where the theta is. So if I had theta being at the B, then for the theta, AC will be opposite and BC will be adjacent. However, if I was to have theta at the A, then BC will be opposite and AC will be adjacent. And the hypotenuse doesn't change the position. The last thing I know about a right angled triangle is that I always know what the height is because the base and the height are going to be perpendicular to each other. So in this picture, I could see that the area of the triangle would be half times if I made BC my base, then my height would be AC. Or if I made AC my base, then BC would be my height. Let's go on to the rules for any triangle. Now the rules, the sine rule, the cos rule, and the area rule can also be used for right angle triangles. However, you can't use the rules for right angle triangles for non right angle triangles. So let's quickly label my triangle. So let's make A at the top, B and C as at the bottom, and let me label my sides as well. Lowercase a is opposite angle A, lowercase b is opposite angle B, and lowercase c is opposite angle C. Now, when I use my sine rule, I only need two of these. You don't need to make an equation with two equal signs. You can just choose two based on what you need. Also, you can also use sine A over lowercase a is sine B over lowercase b. Now, when you've got the sine rule, you need a pair of side and angle. And what I mean by a side and angle as a pair is they must be opposite each other. So normally, when I'm solving triangles that are non-right angled, I'm always going to look for the sine rule first, because that's definitely an easier rule to use than, this, than the cos rule. And if I have a pair, so let's say I've got angle B and I've got side B, and then I need to work out something else, then what I'll do is I'll definitely use the sine rule. But if I don't have that, then I'm going to use the cos rule. Now, let's quickly get to the cos rule. The cos rule will be used in two situations. The one situation that we use the cos rule for 
is if you have three sides. So if you only given sides and no angles. The other time that you use the cos rule is if you have two sides and an included angle. And the reason for this is just say I had these three. I don't have a pair, so I can't use the sign rule. Lastly, the area rule, if I was to think I need A, B, sine C, let's quickly circle those. A, B, sine C, A, B, sine C. Again, I'm going to need to have um, side angle side. So let's go back over that. How do I know which rule to use when? If I've got a pair where I've got a side and angle opposite each other given to me, then I'm going to use the sine rule. If I don't have that, and the two situations I won't have that in, it's either if I'm given three sides, or I'm given side angle side, so an angle between two sides, then I have to use the cos rule. And then to use the area rule, I need to have side angle side. So if I'm missing some information here, I need to go back and use the sine rule to work out information that I need so that I can work out the area rule. Let's look at an example together. Now, before I even get into the example, my biggest tip with these types of questions is to break the shape that you're given into manageable chunks. And these chunks are usually smaller triangles. So if I look at what I've got, I've got A, B, and D make one triangle. And then I've got B, C, and D make another triangle. And when I want to work out sides or angles, I'll rather work with triangles and the rules I know for triangles than trying to do everything at once. So let's get to the question. It says calculate the perimeter of ABCD. Now for ABCD, the whole quadrilateral, I know the length of side AB and I know the length of side CD, AD. But I don't know the length of side BC and I don't know the length of side CD. So if I look at the yellow triangle, triangle BCD, you'll see that I don't have enough information to work out the sides that I need. I just have angles, which means I'm going to have to go back to triangle ABD and work out the length of that missing side. So let's see. Let's write down what I'm doing. In triangle ABD. The length I want to work out is BD. Now, which rule am I going to use? I have a side, a side, and an angle. I do not have a pair, so I'm going to have to use the cosine rule. So the cosine rule is going to stay BD squared is AB squared plus AD squared minus 2 times AB times AD times cos of, a of A. Or in other words, BD squared is 12 squared plus 20 squared minus 2 times 12 times 20 times cos of 100. I'm going to take out my calculator, type that in quickly, and I get 627,35, and I'm just going to put in a few decimal places, so 3511. So if I want BD, I'm going to have to work out the square root of that. So BD is going to be 25,0469 and so on. So that's going to be 25,0469. Now in my next triangle, I have a right angle triangle. So in a right angle triangle, I can use the ratios that I already know. So let's continue below. And I'm going to say in triangle B, C, D. Now in a right angle triangle, I could use the sine rule or the cosine rule, 
but I can also use the ratio. So I'm going to choose to use the ratios. If this is 25, that means this side will be the opposite and the side next to it is the adjacent side. And I know that that will be the hypotenuse because it's opposite the 90 degree. So what I want is I want BC. And that will be the opposite over the adjacent BD is equal to tan of 25. So I said opposite over adjacent. Now I know what BD is. I've already worked it out. So I'm going to say BC is BD 25,0469, etc. times tan of 25. If I was using a calculator, I wouldn't have even erased the number before and just used the answer. And so what I get is 11,6795, etc. So let's put that into my sketch. I've got 11,6795. Now let's go back to what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to calculate the perimeter. So the last thing I need is going to be side CD. So I'm still in triangle BCD. CD, and let's, oh, I've got a right angle triangle with two sides, so let's use Pythagoras. CD squared is going to be 25,0469 squared plus 11,6795 squared. And my reason is Pythagoras. And so I get CD squared is going to be 7, ooh, oops, 7, 6, 3, 7, 6, 4, etc. And so I'm going to square root that. So CD will be 27, 6, 3, 6, 2. Okay. So, so far, let's just quickly highlight what I've got. I know the length of BD. I know the length of BC. And I know the length of CD. That means I can finally actually answer the questions. So question one says the perimeter. So the perimeter will be the sum of the outsides. I'm not going to include BD, just the outsides. 12 plus 20 plus 27,6362, plus 11,6795. And I get, using my calculator, that my perimeter is 71,43 units, because I don't know my lengths. Okay, secondly, let's work out the area. Now, I don't know the formula for the area of a, a quadrilateral like this, but I do know the formula for the areas of the triangles. So I'm going to say that the area is going to be equal to the area of triangle ABD plus the area of triangle BCD. Now ABD is not a right angle triangle, so I'm going to have to use the sine rule. A half, 12 times 20 times sine of 100 and the area of triangle BCD is a right angle triangle. So I'm going to say a half times base, 6, 7, 9, 5 times by the height, 25, comma, etc. I'm going to add those two together and I get the area being 264, comma, 44 centimeters squared. Now these questions are not too bad. You just need to keep yourself calm. Remember, you can only use the sine rule and cosine. Actually, not only. You can always use the sine rule and cosine rule. However, you can only use the ratios and Pythagoras if you have a right angle triangle. So just be careful that what, which formulas you use are appropriate to your situation. Also, can you see I didn't work out every single angle in the, in the shape. I only worked out what I needed to be able to answer the questions. So remember, my first suggestion is, is that you break your object up into triangles. Then work out, is there maybe a linking side you can calculate so that you can answer the question? 